At the time of this recording, at least 217 people have been killed by Israeli bombs in Gaza. 63 of them were children, the vast majority non-combatants. Israel has leveled residential buildings, towers housing international media outlets, all the roads leading to Gaza's trauma hospital, a Doctors Without Borders hospital, and refugee camps. In the Al Shati refugee camp massacre on May 15th, they killed seven members of the same family huddled in their home. And in one single air raid on May 16th, they killed 42 civilians, including 10 children. Every single one of these civilian dead, Israel claims were human shields. So there's nothing to condemn. It's not their fault. It's the fault of Hamas. Nothing to answer for, no pressure to stop, no accountability. We're just supposed to take their word for it. This is repeated without question by corporate media. For example, when Israel leveled the building housing Associated Press offices, claiming it was a secret base for Hamas, they provided no evidence whatsoever, even in secret, to the U.S. State Department. But CNN, instead of grilling Israel about the claim, instead grilled the Associated Press about turning a blind eye to Hamas. The human shield narrative is really the only defense Israel and the U.S. have for excusing these brutal crimes against humanity. Here's the thing. Claiming civilians you kill are human shields is not some sort of get-out-of-jail-free card. Why is it up to Israel to determine if their actions are war crimes or not? I'm going to give you five points that completely evaporate Israel's human shield defense and explain why it must be something to answer for in an international criminal court. Point one. Israel provides no evidence that there are human shields. So far, the best they can do is share these photoshopped images. See, the building is red. That means Hamas is there. You know, for all of Israel's sophisticated surveillance technology with eyes over every single inch of Gaza, You'd think that they'd be able to produce more than cartoons and doctored graphics. In fact, the only proof they have provided so far are fake videos of Hamas rockets in residential areas. On May 15th, the IDF published a video of an Israeli training operation using a Hamas decoy, but claimed it was an actual Hamas missile launcher near civilians. In another lie, Netanyahu's spokesman tweeted a video claiming it was Hamas firing rockets next to an apartment building. Turns out this was a video from 2018 in Syria. So where's the actual evidence? If they cannot provide any, their claims must be investigated and brought to a trial. Even if there was evidence that Israel was hitting legitimate military targets, it still is illegal to kill such an outrageous amount of civilians. And you can't legally blow up a hospital, even if there are militants nearby. Either way, Israel should not be allowed to be above the law. Point two. We shouldn't take Israel's claims of human shields at face value, because they have an extensive history of lying about it. I think the most irrefutable example are their killings at Gaza's Great March of Return, which we documented in our film, Gaza Fights for Freedom. At this Great March, Israeli snipers directly targeted and killed 183 unarmed demonstrators, including 35 innocent children at these protests. Journalists marked press, medics performing medical aid, a man in a wheelchair, and so many more. But Israel said they were all human shields, so it was all legitimate. Here's where they really exposed themselves. According to international law, Human shield applies to civilians as collateral damage when you're targeting military forces in combat. But at the Great March protests, there were no militants, nobody shooting at Israelis, nobody with weapons, no targets remotely connected to military operations. So if all of those children, medics, journalists, and disabled people were human shields, who were they shielding? Even when they killed celebrated female medic Razan al-Najjar, they released a propaganda video saying she was a human shield. But shielding what? Under no circumstances would killing that many civilians at an unarmed protest, with the defense that they were human shields for non-existent military targets, hold up for a second in a war crimes tribunal. Today, 
Israel relies on the fog of war to make this claim seem possible. But just two years ago, Israel showed an irrefutable pattern of lying about human shields. And now, they have zero credibility. Point three. According to Israel's own definition of human shield, every man, woman, and child in Gaza is a human shield. They claim that anyone in the vicinity of not only Hamas missile sites, but Hamas offices, Hamas individuals, is a human shield. This includes Hamas members who are sleeping at home with their families and the surrounding houses. This includes anyone within a mile of any Hamas institution, which is literally all of the two million people who live there. Look, Hamas is the government of Gaza. Therefore, any civilian infrastructure is considered Hamas infrastructure, everything from transportation to healthcare. So anyone in the vicinity of those things or people can be killed with impunity. Even Israel's Minister of Defense confirmed that this is indeed their view, stating on May 18th that, quote, no person, area, or neighborhood in Gaza is immune from airstrikes. How is it in any way acceptable that Israel can categorize every human being in Gaza a legitimate target? And if you take Israel's logic far enough, they could kill everyone in Gaza, and it would be justified. Point four. If you accept Israel's definition of human shield, then you have to accept that Israel is using human shields as well. Armed Israeli soldiers are everywhere among civilian areas. Not only that, but their military bases are nestled in densely populated residential areas. For example, the Israeli Defense Force's main headquarters is smack dab in the middle of a residential sector of Tel Aviv and a major shopping center. Does anyone accuse Israel of using human shields? In another example, the Israeli army broadcasts from a residential apartment tower with antennas on the roof. If Hamas leveled that building, does anyone doubt it would be deemed a war crime? What we have here is a double standard. Israel wants the human shield defense for them to be any civilian they kill. But for any civilian killed by Hamas, it's a war crime. You know, the purpose of international laws of war is to create a standard that's applied to all sides equally. But Israel and the United States have a different view, that the rules only apply to their enemies. Point five. If everyone in Gaza is a legitimate human shield, that's only because of Israel's own design. This is a situation of Israel's own making. Israel drew the borders and Israel refuses to let anyone leave. To leave Gaza, you must get approval from the Israeli government, and the government will almost always say no. So what are people supposed to do who want to remove themselves from the carnage? They have literally nowhere to run and nowhere to hide. Israel has made Gaza, in every sense of the term, an open-air prison. They trap two million civilians in this tiny strip of land. Then they bomb their neighborhoods and say, well, they shouldn't have been there. The mountain of civilian dead has to be looked at through the perspective of the Israeli blockade and the inability of anyone to escape. Resistance forces in Gaza have nowhere else to go to. Gaza's self-defense capabilities are confined to this heavily populated area. And Israel has intentionally made Gaza unlivable. The only way Gaza is able to exert pressure on Israel is by firing rockets. If they peacefully protest their conditions, they're massacred just the same. If they do nothing, Israel continues to blockade them, erode their living conditions, while ethnically cleansing the rest of their land. Israel has made it so the only leverage Gaza has to get any change is using the one weapon it has. Besides, Gaza has the right to self-defense under international law. And contrary to what Israel claims, the current round of fighting was started by Israel, not Hamas when they deployed criminal violence against Al-Aqsa and Sheikh Jarrah. And right at the outset, on May 12th, Hamas offered a ceasefire to Israel. Israel rejected it because they wanted to keep going, despite their rhetoric of only wanting the rockets to stop. So if Israel's going to keep bombing, Gaza has no choice but to fight back. And that in turn becomes the excuse for Israel massacring so-called human shields. It's far from the first time this term has been used to state-sponsored mass slaughter. 
Human shield propaganda has been long applied by the Empire to dehumanize the enemy in nearly every major world conflict or war, from its atrocities in Korea to Iraq. And it always serves the same purpose, to dehumanize entire populations, giving the perpetrators a free pass to act with total disregard for civilian life. What the Israeli government is trying to do is cover up what their military is actually doing, which is indiscriminate bombing. That seems glaringly apparent, and international law is very clear about indiscriminate attacks being a war crime, strictly prohibited in any situation. To sum it all up, it is completely outrageous to let Israel make this blanket claim to absolve itself of any wrongdoing. All of those lives taken had value. They all had families. They all had futures they were robbed of. It's not fair and it's not right to be able to wash away their deaths with such an audacious lie. This is an unconscionable situation. What everyone should agree on is that if an army, especially a colonizing power attacking a population it occupies and completely controls, is going to kill such an outrageous number of civilians, they shouldn't be their own judge and jury. This is what war crimes tribunals are for, and that is exactly what Israel needs to face.